Good morning. We have general questions. Question one, Rhoda Grant. To ask the Scottish Government whether a public local inquiry will be held following the publication of the draft road order material for the A9 Berrydale Brays Improvement Scheme. Minister Derek Mackay. Currently, one statutory objector remains, so consequently, it has been necessary for Transport Scotland to approach the Director for a Director for Planning Environmental Appeals in order to arrange a public local inquiry. And we understand that an inquiry will proceed unless this objection is withdrawn. Rhoda Grant. I thank the Minister for that response. He will be aware that Keithness Chamber of Commerce in July cr criticised the Scottish Government for dragging its heels on the issue. Will the Minister, in light of his answer, commit funding for the Far North line, rail line to ensure that people in Keithness and indeed businesses in the Far North are not disadvantaged by this further delay in road improvements? Minister? Well, first of all, I'd want to correct uh, Rhoda Grant. No, they didn't criticise Scottish governments. They criticised politicians collectively for the length of time that it takes for uh, reporters uh, to consider these kind of schemes. I actually agree with those that want to see the Berrydale Brace scheme uh, proceed, and I should say that this government's done more to progress that scheme uh, than any other uh, government, and we will continue to make progress. We are committed to the scheme, but we have to follow due process. It will have to go through uh, the process of the DPEA, which I have to say is also performing better and processing cases more quickly than was the case under the previous administration uh, as well. We are committed to this as a priority. Within a massive infrastructure investment Program. We will also look at rail investment, which is also at a record high eh, under this government, ensuring we touch every part of the eh, country as well. I hope that the objection can be withdrawn so that we can get on with the Berrydale Brays scheme that is so required. But if it is not withdrawn, then we have to comply with the law and the regulations, undertake that eh, inquiry, and then we will proceed as quickly as we possibly can. But unlike Labour, who uh, continue to make demands, this government makes progress. Question two, Bruce Crawford. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what further consultation is planned with regard to the Land Reform Scotland Bill. Minister Eileen MacLeod. Uh, the Scottish Government welcome all voices to the debate on land reform. The Scottish Government's Land Reform Bill, which represents an important next step in our wider programme of land reform, was introduced to this Parliament on the 22nd of June. The Rural Affairs, Climate Change and Environment Committee's call for written evidence closed on the 14th of August, and the majority of responses are now available on the Parliament's website. The Committee has also started to take oral evidence on the Bill this week. We have a great opportunity to ensure that all views and ideas on the Bill's proposals are explored further as the Land Reform Bill goes through this Parliament, and Scottish Ministers look forward to continuing to work closely with the Committee members, stakeholder organisations and people across Scotland on the future of land reform in Scotland. Bruce Crawford. I thank the Minister for her response. Uh, and would, I'd be grateful if she would meet with me to discuss some specific suggestions I have in regard to the agricultural holdings aspects of the Bill, in particular the potential for putting the Code of Conduct for land agents on a statutory footing, enabling tenant farmers to better secure the full value from their farm at time of surrendering a lease, agreeing levels of compensation before agreeing in principle to quit and enabling tenant farmers to more fully benefit from any diversification activity they undertake. Minister. Uh, both the Cabinet Secretary and myself would be very happy to meet with Mr Crawford to discuss the agricultural holding provisions uh, within the Bill. We will also be consulting uh, stakeholders on the detail of the regulations to be developed in connection with the provisions uh, in the Bill and on any other issues that would be helpful to explore with industry experts. And some of that work has already begun, presenting officer, for example, in relation to defining the approach to productive capacity to ensure that we achieve the best results for the sector. Question three, Ian Gray. To ask the Scottish Government whether the new Haddington Community Hospital will be completed by 2019. Cabinet Secretary, Shona Robertson. I refer the member to previous answers, in particular my written answer to the member on the 7th of August and Mr Swinney's answer on the 31st of 
July, uh, stated in his answers the Scottish Government is considering whether further changes are required to the hub model in the light of the recent opinion by the Office for National Statistics on the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, another project using funding on the NPD model. Scottish Ministers remain committed to supporting the East Lothian Community Hospital project and NHS Lothian is continuing to develop its plans for a replacement hospital which are currently progressing on schedule. Ian Gray. Presiding officer, East Lothian's new hospital was due to open in 2009. Uh, this government switched it to their private finance programme, and this has caused a 10-year delay. Any new problems with that programme simply cannot be allowed to further delay the hospital. I simply ask again that the Cabinet Secretary give my constituents the firm promise they need that this hospital will be completed by 2019. Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, it was Ian Gray's government that was the lover of PFI programmes, and of this course the health PFI. budget is now suffering oh, the consequences of that. The NPD model has delivered a numerous new build uh, facilities in schools and in hospitals and other important parts of the infrastructure. Uh, the Scottish Futures Trust um, is engaging closely with project partners to discuss the implications uh, for them of the ONS um, uh, comments and considerations. The Deputy First Minister will provide a further report to Parliament in due course and in the meantime all appropriate action has been taken to protect the vital capital investment in Scotland um, including the uh, new Haddington Community Hospital. Um, and, of course, we will manage the implications of the latest guidance on classification on the NPD programme and the Scottish budget. But, you know, this government has invested huge amounts of resource into new hospitals and new schools, and we will continue to do so. Question four, Richard Baker. Uh, thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with Aberdeen City and Aberdeenshire Councils on progressing the bid for the Aberdeen City Region deal. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presenting officer, Scottish Ministers are fully supportive of a city region deal for Aberdeen. There have been a number of official level discussions with both local authorities to explore the opportunity that such a deal would offer, and we look forward to continuing constructive discussions in the coming weeks and months. Richard Baker. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary assure me that, that in addition to working closely with both local authorities and the UK Government to progress this bid, which will be submitted formally tomorrow, ministers will provide resources for the deal, as they did in the case of Glasgow and the Clyde Valley? And will he also agree that, given the current significant challenges for the oil and gas industry, uh, this bid's success is crucial for both the wider Scottish and UK economies? Cabinet Secretary. Can I say to Mr Baker and reassure him that the Government... Uh, attaches the greatest of importance to working constructively with Aberdeen City Council and Aberdeenshire Council on the, uh, the, the city deal for Aberdeen. Uh, this will of course come, uh, will, will assist in dealing with some of the issues and the challenges that uh, prevail in the oil and gas sector. But of course what will also help that is the significant infrastructure investment the Scottish Government is already making in the North East of Scotland through, for example, the £745 million worth of investment in the Aberdeen Western Peripheral Route, um, the uh, work that is underway in expanding health infrastructure in the North East, and also the £187 million investment in transport infrastructure. So we'll, uh, we will willingly consider the bid that has been brought forward by Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire Councils, uh, and we will discuss it with both authorities and with the United Kingdom Government. Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, can the Cabinet Secretary give me an indication of what consultation Aberdeen City Council and Aberdeenshire Council have undertaken with business and communities uh, in the North East to garner their thoughts on what should be in a city deal investment plan? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I certainly uh, am not familiar with the formulation of the bid. That is a matter entirely for the two bodies concerned, and the Government will, um, will, will, will judge the issues that emerge from that. But I think it would be beneficial and advantageous for extensive dialogue to be undertaken with the business community and also with local communities to ensure that the bid can command widespread support and also that it addresses the needs and the aspirations of people in the north east of Scotland. Question five, John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to ensure availability of GPs in remote and rural areas. 
Cabinet Secretary, Shona Robeson. Ministers are fully committed to supporting primary care, including GPs, and ensuring that all communities in Scotland, uh, including remote and rural, receive safe, reliable and sustainable health care services. Over the next three years, the Scottish Government will invest £60 million as part of the primary care fund. This will help to address immediate workload and recruitment issues and put in place long-term sustainable change to support GPs and improve access to services for patients. As part of this, £2.5 million will be invested in work to explore with key stakeholders the issues surrounding GP recruitment and retention, which can be particularly challenging in remote and rural areas. John Finney. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. The Cabinet Secretary will be familiar with the Royal College of Nursing's report, Going the Extra Mile, which rightly advocates the role of uh, advanced nurse practitioners. Uh, for example, uh, they are delivering immediate care in Shetland and providing vital primary care services on non-doctor islands. Is that a model that the Cabinet Secretary would encourage rolling out? Cabinet Secretary. John Finney makes a, a very important point about the role of advanced nurse practitioners and they have very much demonstrated their value um, in the acute setting and in primary care. And I'm very keen that we look at how we um, in encourage and facilitate the training of advanced nurse practitioners. At the moment, it's um, been down to the board's initiative to do that in their local area. I would like to see and develop a more systematic training of advanced nurse practitioners because I think the needs of the health service, whether that's in primary care or in acute, are going to require more of them going forward. And that's something I'm actively looking at at the moment. And I would be happy to keep John Finney informed of the progress on that. Richard Simpson. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for her support for advanced nurse practitioners, but we now have a situation where 18 general practices in the Highlands are being directly run by the Health Board, and the dispensing practices, which are largely in the Highlands also, are down now by 40 per cent under this Government. Uh, will the Government institute an independent review of remote and rural practices, and will also follow the Wilson Report suggestion of an immediate moratorium on new community pharmacies until that independent review is conducted? Well, can I say to Richard Simpson that in terms of those GP practices that are requiring to be supported by boards because of the difficulties they're facing at the moment, there are nine of those across Scotland. Richard Simpson has conflated those practices which are salaried practices with those that are requiring additional support from health boards at this moment. I actually think the salaried service of GPs is a good thing. I'm very surprised the Labour Party don't seem to think it is. It's particularly a good thing for the more remote and rural areas and it is a good thing for more deprived communities. It is a model that we have established and supported for quite some time. It's just a pity the Labour Party doesn't seem to support it. John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that there are insufficient doctors available to provide an out of hours service in Ayrshire and that this work is to be undertaken in future by nurse practitioners. Is she content that this will not represent a diminution or dilution of the service previously provided by GPs? And has she or her officials discussed this with NHS Ayrshire and Arran? Cabinet Secretary. Well, John Scott will be aware that Lewis Ritchie is undertaking a review of out-of-hours services and has been going around all parts of the country, including Ayrshire and Arran, to discuss with uh, local health professionals and the public and others uh, around the needs of that particular area. Uh, now, we're waiting for his recommendations, which will be coming uh, soon. Uh, but I think what is fair to say that the, the future of out-of-hours um, sustainability um, will be very closely aligned with the future for primary care in hours, and that is it can't just be about the GP uh, delivering those services. It has to be a multidisciplinary team, which will include things like the advanced nurse practitioners that John Finney referred to and others, but they will be fully trained and able and have the skill level to do that job. Now, when Lewis Ritchie reports, I'm happy to uh, come back to John Scott with more information and indeed this Parliament with more information of how we take those recommendations forward. Question six, Rob Gibson. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what recent discussions it's had with NHS Highland regarding staff shortages and hard to fill posts. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. Government officials maintain ongoing contact with uh, NHS Highland around a number of matters, including staff recruitment and retention. I will be holding NHS Highland's annual review in WIC on the 7th of September, at which a wide range of issues will be discussed with the Board. Rob Gibson. 
thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. Will she ensure that it's in the public interest of my constituents and many others that uh, placements in rural and urban Scotland for trainee doctors are created rather than just training uh, doctors in one or two large urban centres um, so as to offer these trainees insights into working in smaller and more remote centres as part of their career and potential choices for future work? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I, I do agree with that. A number of initiatives are already in place to ensure doctors get to experience rural as well as urban settings. NHS Education Scotland has developed post-CCT rural fellowships for GPs who have completed speciality training and we're working with boards to develop networks between rural and urban hospitals which in some areas involve rotating staff between rural and urban hospitals whilst through the Being Here programme we're exploring a range of approaches to develop sustainable health care in rural areas and I'm certainly happy to keep Rob Gibson informed of the discussions that we have at the NHS Highland Review about these matters. Question 7, Neil Findlay. To ask the Scottish Government what the average cost is to keep a patient in hospital for one week. Cabinet Secretary, Shona Robinson. The average cost of an inpatient week at an NHS Scotland hospital in 2013-14 was £3,817. Neil Findlay. Uh, one in seven beds in Lothian hospitals are currently occupied by patients who are well enough to be at home. Uh, why is the government wasting almost £4,000 a week keeping people in hospital who don't want to or need to be there? Wouldn't it be better to fully finance our councils to provide good quality social care for people in their own homes? Cabinet Secretary. Well, far from wasting money, we've just invested £100 million over the next three years in tackling delayed discharge. West Lothian will receive £11.4 million from the integrated care and delayed discharge funding over the next three years. That includes £8.5 million from the integrated care fund and £2.85 million in relation to delayed di discharge. This is a, an issue, presiding officer, I've made very clear is a top priority for us to tackle. And if Neil Finlay had looked at the recent statistics, he would have recognised that we are making progress. Yes, there's far more to be done, but progress we are making. And I thought that's something Neil Finlay might have welcomed. Question number eight, Malcolm Chisholm. To ask the Scottish Government what rate of landfill tax will apply to the disposal of contaminated soil. <coughs> Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. President Officer, subsoils qualify at the lower rate of tax unless they are contaminated to such an extent as to render them hazardous. This recognises that there is a relatively low level of environmental impact associated with landfilling subsoils. Permissible levels of contamination are decided by Revenue Scotland under powers granted to them in the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014. They have recently consulted on this issue and will be shortly publishing updated guidance. Malcolm Tissom. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that it would be more environmentally friendly to encourage the remediation and recycling of contaminated soil rather than sending it all for landfill disposal? And therefore, would it not be better to impose a higher rate of landfill tax for such soil rather than a lower rate which will kill off the soil remediation industry? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, uh, the, the issues that um, Mr Chisholm has raised, he, he's raised with me uh, in correspondence, and I've looked carefully at the issues that um, he has raised. There is a balance to be struck here in relation to providing the opportunities for uh, the reuse of soil as part of regeneration schemes and ensuring that there is an effective means of disposal of soils um, in a fashion that uh, does not create environmental damage. And Revenue Scotland essentially are considering that point within the consultation exercise. Um, their judgment and their views will form the basis of the guidance that uh, the, uh, the, the board have looked at, and that will be published shortly. But I can assure Mr Chisholm that the issues that he has raised with me have been at the heart of the, the consideration that has been given to this issue by Revenue Scotland. And, of course, I, I will be happy to answer any further thoughts Mr Chisholm has on behalf of his constituents once the Revenue Scotland guidance has been published. Thank you. We are now moving to First Minister's questions.